Saturday of RoboBoat 2014, and that means only one thing, qualifying day. That's the day that the teams first let their boats confront the challenge course for real points. These self-guided seafarers get two separate scoring attempts, one on each side of the course, to try and maximize the number of points achieved on one single run. The best score will be used to try and qualify them for the finals. There's a limited number of final slots, so it really comes down to doing whatever will rack up the most points. Four days of practice seems like a long time to get prepared, but we know with robots that anything can happen and usually does. Here's a rundown of what actually did happen in the qualifying session. Back again to defend their title, the University of Florida dominated the course challenge today in round two. With a 56-pound thrust, the reigning champs blazed their way through the speed gates and obstacle course and then quickly locked onto the docking station, pausing to aerate the water for the fishes. After completing the pinger challenge, despite using yesterday's frequencies, these champs proved once again they are a force to be reckoned with. The all-new team resurrecting the trim little trimaran from Georgia Tech ASDL got off to a strong start with 15 and a half pounds force in the thrust test, but a compass error of 20 degrees left them wide of the starting mark in the morning, and connection and heat problems despite their cool looking solar array kept them stuck on the dock in the afternoon. They'll be energetically trying to live up to the boat's name, Efficiency, by getting all their performance points in Sunday's last chance qualifying. Next we move to the University of Michigan, who seemed to have an uphill battle on today's course. After struggling to program successful GPS waypoints in their first run, the team was later faced with thrust system issues, resulting in zero points for their second round. No doubt a disappointing showing for Michigan and their fans. It was another case of old boat, new team when Florida Atlantic University's venerable V-Bass put to the water early in the morning, vectoring straight through the start and speed gates before veering off towards the bank perhaps pining for the Florida swamps. Vexing code compilation failures on their beagle bone kept them dock bound in the afternoon, leaving the Valiant crew only one more shot at qualifying victory. Returning once again, the much anticipated Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University team conquered the competition in round two, giving University of Florida a run for their money. These robo-vets had no problem maneuvering through the course today as they successfully entered and recorded the correct entrance gate for the obstacle avoidance and docking station. It's not easy being green when the University of Central Florida's classic boat name is in town as the craft made multiple banzai charges at the green start gate. But at last, Kermit's lament was replaced by Toreador as the boat bulldozed through the gates bashing both the red buoys along the way. Making it into the obstacle field, the brazen bark bopped two obstacle buoys and made a bold approach to the docking challenge, bobbing just short of the triangular blazon. Also experiencing trouble on the course today was Villanova. Although the team remained calm and collected, their boat failed to pass the speed gate challenge and consistently faced navigation issues after the camera captured both courses. In an effort to troubleshoot this, the team locked a heading going straight through the gates before switching over to search mode. But despite their best efforts, the thrusters continually led the boat to shore ending the run. It was a pair of promising runs for Cedarville University, marred by just a touch of bad luck. In the morning, the boat made it through the gates and most of the obstacle field, but a snagged yellow obstacle sent it nearly round the twist. The team made the wise choice to lock in those points. Then in afternoon qualifying, GPS confusion found them auto-docking with the obstacle field, then fleeing across the pond after the frontal touch sensors triggered on an accidental obstacle bump. University of Rhode Island fell captive to repository hub failure in round one, and sadly, round two wasn't much different. After isolating the problem and incorporating a lead-acid battery, the team faced shielding issues. The high-voltage wire neighbored the router, causing interference and ultimately running down the clock. National Cheng Kung University from Taiwan stayed up late conquering a configuration issue with the motor controller kindly lent to them by Georgia Tech, only to spend the morning attempting to speed balance their thrusters in order to open loop the boat through the gates bullet style. But playing Russian roulette eventually gives you a headache. So too, they finally lobbed the projectile through both gates in the afternoon, but risked the points to try for more, ending up with a bust. Experiencing a total system failure, Old Dominion University had their fingers crossed while entering the semifinals. During round one, ODU couldn't connect to the wireless due to a bum wire. Entering round two with a new wire, the team continued to have system difficulties. The team couldn't seem to differentiate between the colored buoys and had no time to correct the threshold. Maybe they should have tried crossing their toes, too. Indonesia's Diponegoro University team already had to deal with more than their fair share of adversity, as the first thing on their agenda was fixing the damage to their boat wrought by the diabolical duo of customs inspectors and airline baggage handlers. 
Things didn't get any easier from there for the audacious archipelagics, as wireless connection issues kept the frog boat drifting at the dock during both of their qualifying sessions. We hope they can get the problem sorted out by tomorrow for one last shot going from tadpole to triumph. There was enough time after qualifying for another practice session in the afternoon, and then a full third qualifying session on Sunday morning to determine which teams make it into the finals. Don't forget to come back here to RoboBoat.org on Sunday, July 13th for our live finals webcast, 1 to 5 Eastern Time. We'll have every autonomous sight, fright and delight, along with live commentary and team representatives on the podium to answer all your robot questions in real time. Fire up. See you there. there.